Welcome to another edition of Health Department Roundtable. I'm your host, Chris Schultz, and with me tonight is our health director, Marty Golightly, and our public health nurse, Lindsay Wright. How are you guys tonight? Uh, it's been a long, long week, but we were, we're, we're, we're doing the best we can, so it's been a very productive week. Made it to another Friday. That's what's important. Amen. Rewarding week. Hard work, but rewarding. Yep. That's what we like to. And, yeah. and you're smiling, so that's uh, that's something, right? Yeah, we're smiling because we got to give a bunch of first responders their second shot this week, and we got to use the the leftover doses to put together a very last minute uh, senior clinic today with some leftover doses as well. So um, it was a worthwhile endeavor, and uh, the joy on the seniors that otherwise wouldn't leave their house when they come to the senior center for the shot, it's worth it. It makes it's it worth it. It's definitely hard not to smile after today. <laughs> and they didn't have to wait in a queue that was 80,000 minutes. Um, oh, we call them. As, yeah. as we, can. we have our wait list and we work down it. Awesome. So let's touch on that. Uh, we usually like to start off um, checking in where we are with active cases. Yeah, so we are seeing a slight uptick, kind of not surprising after vacation week. Uh, we are back to 50 active, which is far better than we were back in December and January, but we are, I am seeing kind of that slow, steady increase, um, which we had talked about before vacation that we would likely see. We have uh, 47 residents quarantined, um, and then the 1,626 were, are, have, cases have been removed from tracking. Excellent. I want to say last week when we met, we were like 35, 36. Yeah, I think we were in the 40s. But yeah, so this is a vacation week bump that hopefully we will clear rapidly. Um, vaccination. So um, I know that our uh, beloved governor was... Uh, testifying today um with that situation as far as we know nothing has changed on our level no I, I do want to touch on a few things though if you don't mind the uh we are working very close with our friends at the brockton housing authority who uh, manage the properties in abington uh our senior housing and we have a plan to administer the vaccine at those locations so those residents won't have to go anywhere we have set up a mobile one-stop shopping uh, a crew of me and Lindsay and Justin and a few of the other paramedics and firefighters, along with the council and agent staff, Suzanne, Amanda, and Amy, uh, with help from the veteran service, Adam Gunn, to go there uh, and give those shots. And we should have, we should also receive shots to from that to do some of the homebound seniors that are just trapped in their house uh, for whatever reasons are. Uh, trapped is not the right word that, you know, that they're just, they're just homebound. And we, the point is we want to go to them uh, and we will take our services to their front door uh, and hang out with them. So that should happen in the next week or two. And it should kind of be an ongoing thing as, as long as we can make it. Um, so I encourage everybody to call us if you are, if you know a homebound resident in town, so we can add them to our, uh, our list of people that need a visit. Um, and we would stress the fact that they need to visit. If there, if there is possible that they can come to one of our clinics at the senior center, obviously that's the first choice because you know we're we're staffed and manned and uh, and you know we get all the juice and crackers and cookies and hang out with all the uh, firefighters and cops over there and have fun. But if there's just a reason that you cannot leave your home, we will happily come to you. Um, uh, call Lindsay or call uh, the health department and we'll, we'll we'll sort that out. So I'm happy to say that we should get started on that next week. Uh, worst case scenario of the week after that. We'll also should be having a rather large second dose clinic next week. Now I have not received that shipment yet. And I also have not received notification of that shipment as of this recording. So uh, please be patient with us. We are dependent upon the state delivering that vaccine. So as soon as we know, you'll know. We don't, we, it won't be a secret. It'll be pushed out as, as rapidly as we can. And I don't normally push it out the 100% go until I get a shipping confirmation. There's a lot can happen between allocation notifications and shipping. So when I get the shipping, uh, all of the appointment times are the same. Most of the residents have already been alerted. Uh, Lindsay, correct me if I'm wrong. We've gotten it's almost 250? 
two, just shy of 250. I want to say it's 247. Um, we are shifting that Friday group um, over to Wednesday, but the senior center staff is on top of that and we'll be going over all of the details and getting everyone their appointment time. And so nobody needs to call. We will call everyone and go over all of the details. That's correct. Thank you, Lindsay. The, uh, this will be the biggest one we have, have, will have done at the senior center. And anybody who's been there knows that capabilities are not a problem. Staffing is not a problem. Uh, we'll have a lot of fun. Come there, see some really happy people getting the shot. Hopefully we'll have some, we'll be able we'll have the, the wherewithal and the means to schedule a few more during that day. But, but, but we will call you and let you know if you're on our list. Um, the fight continues. We will not, we will not stop um, advocating for local delivery of the vaccine to our most vulnerable, especially, and to our essential workers and teachers. We think those people deserve it. And um, as, as, as supply issues loosen up, hopefully we'll be able to do even more. Has there um, been any discussion with uh, neighboring towns about a regional clinic at all? I've, I've had a couple of people ask about that. <clears throat> Discussions are ongoing. The requirements are pretty, they're pretty tough for the kind of situations that we are in. They are more geared towards larger communities, but uh, we are still actively looking at that. We have meetings next week to see if we can get it to work. It's just, it's just one of those things that's tough to, to manage because it's a lot of moving parts. It's a lot of different departments, uh, you know, cause we're not just dealing with one department from one different town and we're dealing with fire, board of health, you know, it's, there's a lot of moving parts. So if we can put together a regional clinic, we most certainly will, but I don't want to agree to a regional clinic and then not be able to fulfill our requirements to the state. Um, we will only do it if the, uh, if logistically it is prudent to do so. I don't want to under or over promise and under deliver. I, I prefer the other way. And we know uh, the word is Moderna and Pfizer are both going to ramp up um, production. And it looks like Johnson and Johnson may get FDA approval this weekend. So yep, the advisory commission on vaccines did approve uh, Johnson and Johnson a few hours ago, which is good. So that means they could take delivery of uh Oh, mass delivery as early as next weekend or next week sometime, which is, you know, a step in the right direction. And that's a one shot series, which makes it a lot more convenient, especially for large cohorts. Like, for example, the teachers, that would be a really good one to just get all the teachers in, especially with talk of opening schools as early as April. I would really, really like to get that um, to get them done before then. It's also a lot more shelf stable, I guess, is the easiest way. It doesn't require the cold temps and the, it's not as finicky as Moderna and Pfizer. There's, no, that's, I am, that's the way to put it. I, I am team vaccinate. I, it, I don't care which manufacturer you throw at me. I will, we will do it. But from all of the research that Marty and I have looked at, um, the Johnson and Johnson is not as finicky. <laughs> and, it's, and it's numbers are just as impressive. I mean, uh, there's nothing, there's nothing to, you know, really differentiate between Pfizer and Moderna. And then there's not really a big step down from the Johnson Johnson one dose. It is just, it is six of one, half a dozen of the other. So if we can do a one dose series for, you know, a lot of our essential workers, then we should do so. Mm -hmm. Keep our fingers crossed. We're headed in that direction. I think we are. I, I am, uh, I'm trying to be optimistic and, um, keep that light at the end of the tunnel. And speaking of lights at the end of the tunnel, next week marks our restaurants being open uh, a little with a little bit easement of restrictions and uh, some easement of capacity restrictions on our places of worship and things like that. So I encourage everybody to get to the uh, website and check out the rules. Um, restaurants, as long as you can have a six feet distance between people and tables, you're good to go. Uh, 150 outdoor, 100 indoor, 50% capacity for most places. Check the website. All the rules are on there. So that's a step in the right direction. And uh, town hall, well, we'll talk about that at our board meeting uh, on Monday night. So I encourage everybody to tune in to our, uh, our, our board meeting. But I think the town is moving in the right direction because our test positivity rate, I believe, was 4.7. Yep. Yeah. First time under five since in a long time. The fall. Yeah, a long time. So. Like those are wins and 
I believe that is a testament to a lot of a lot of factors, not least among them uh, vaccination. But as long as that that trend stays the same and we don't see huge bumps from the reopening of things, which I don't think we will, uh, as long as we can keep our gathering limit down, uh, and especially as vaccination efforts ramp, um, I'm I will be happy to see more people. I will be happy to have fireworks in june and i know that'll make a lot of residents happy uh, uh yes the uh, founder's day weekend do we want to uh i, I know they the committee for that is meeting um soon and that would be good news for them yep that would be good news for them that would be good news for our abington summer concert series uh all of the work that the all of the hard work that these good people put on uh we will be able to have camps this summer yeah. so yeah overnight camps yeah. too yeah, <laughs> yeah. Camps at uh, our Beaver Brook uh, will be there, and I know our our recreation committees and departments work really hard to offer very uh, robust programming for those campers. So we're very happy to to say that they'll be able to do that. Uh, hi, Sarah. Hey, hi, Sarah. Thank you for joining us. We just talked about the teachers and um, the Johnson and Johnson dose, uh, and how the easement of restrictions. Uh, if, for those that don't know, Sarah is our point person for our high school contact tracing uh, methodology, right? Our district wide. District wide. District wide. <laughs> Except for that one hiccup we had in October, uh, <laughs> and and, and the, when there was just too much staff quarantined after the holidays, we have. Uh, been i think i think as a district extraordinarily successful and i think that is a testament to the school nurses the school teachers and the school administrators continued hard work to keep our students and staff safe uh we could not do the large numbers of clinics uh for shots were it not for the school nurses administrators uh and staff uh, all the way from facilities to um, to our lunch personnel. I, I don't. They have been an invaluable partner, and I when I say invaluable, I mean I, we literally could not do it. We could not keep schools safely open were it not for the 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 partnerships we have forged with the school nursing staff, administrators, uh, facilities people. Like it's been. I know I've said this a lot, but it's been like a real joy to be part of that team of people who have been able to set ego aside and do what's best for their community. So we, no one wants to get the teachers done more than us. No one, and we say teachers and we, I don't want people to think we're just talking about the, the public school teachers. When we say teachers, we're talking about our early education academies that are in town, our friends over at St. Bridget. Um, like we have not forgotten about you. Uh, so we will, we'll, we'll hopefully get everybody done as fast as humanly possible. And staff too. Yes, yeah, I, teachers I, I, and yeah, yeah. Let, let, let's do, when we say teachers, educators, we mean our bus drivers, our uh, facilities, our facilities people, our uh, cooks and cafeteria personnel, all of those people that make school safe and a, a good experience for the kiddos, of which I have two in the district. Yep, as do I. So yep. thank you again. Um, Sarah, do you have uh, any any updates on what's going on with the schools? I know um, there has been some talk about um, looking forward as as our numbers are getting better. Yeah, so I mean, I'm sure everybody saw school committee meeting that they talked about, you know, potentially opening things up more. I I know that the district is working very hard to to get more kids in school and do it safely. So I appreciate that they're not rushing. Um, some districts I've heard are rushing kids back and there's no real plan. I have not, I can say with 100% certainty that Abington is not doing that. They do want to get kids back, but they want to do so in a safe and productive manner. Um, we have seen numbers go down. The past two weeks looked great. Um, this week I just updated the dashboard was our numbers are creeping back up. Um, the number of people in quarantine are lower than, than they have been previously, but I think due to the vacation travel, all that stuff, we are starting to see an uptick in, um, positive cases in the school. 
right? We discussed that earlier. I, I want to reiterate Sorry. that uh, Sarah's dashboard uh, does not just is not just for Abington residents. There will be some because of some of our personnel who don't live in Abington but work in Abington. Right. So the numbers might not be correct. Right. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, that, so uh, the the vacation bump is real. Uh, we, we are we are we are actually we are able yep. to see it. Just one of those fun scientific facts. Not fun. One of those interesting scientific facts. We are trying to like keep an eye on the cases that we are seeing, and I know Marty and Lindsay do this anyways. But non Abington residents, like teachers and staff, that they may not get the info. We're trying to see if it was related to travel or not um from what we've seen so far i mean it's still early to tell from travel but it seems like most of the ones that we've seen so far were not necessarily from traveling more so like people just kind of letting their guard down hanging out with a lot of people um you know home contacts i think it's a little early for us to see the travel positives yet Probably this week we'll start seeing them. Yeah, we we will track it as close as as closely as. Mm -hmm. And even the non Abington like teachers, staff like Marty and Lindsay have been great and instrumental in in helping us to make sure because they don't always hear from their town's board of health, um, you know, or health department or any you know. Sometimes they don't even get a call from the CTC. So. Marty and Lindsay have been so generous and helpful in in making sure that even our non Abington you know, staff um, are getting the accurate information, able to get back in a safe, safe manner and timely manner. Well, they, they are family too. They get, they should Absolutely. get it. Absolutely. Absolutely. We appreciate that. What, else, Chris? what do you got for us on this exciting, but tired day? <laughs> tired day. Um, well, I did not receive any viewer questions this week. I guess that's a good thing, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's good. We um, and just a, a a reminder to people. I know, uh, I know it's cold outside right now, but we're headed into spring, warmer weather. Uh, daylight savings is next weekend, so we're just all going to have to remember to be extra vigilant. Um, oh, real quick, I know I'm going to mention this a couple Fridays in a row now. St. Patty's Day. Listen, I get. It. <laughs> Believe me, I get it. Um, but if we could maybe do our best to not have big gatherings on St. Patty's Day, uh, that would really help the cause of keeping things open and opening more stuff. Um, so we can have a huge blowout on, I don't know, Independence Day. You know, like that's, fingers crossed, please be responsible on St. Patty's Day more than you normally are. We have said it from, I don't know how many times, and I will continue to say it, that if you know, we sit and say, please stay home and don't do this. And if we, you know, listening is great, but if someone has questions as to the rationale of why we're asking this, please call our office and talk to us. I will explain all of it. We don't, you know, we don't want blind obedience. Question it. That's great. But please call and ask the questions. Um, we say stay home for a reason. We, yeah. uh, you know, we, oh, we can say, oh, I will, we will, we will lead I, by example. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> but yeah, we, and, and I'll remind people, like sometimes people ask the board of health, these people here, not, not the board of health are the ones to ask because they're the experts. But if, but if their point of contact is you, you know how to get them in touch with us. Absolutely. That yeah. So we're, you know, Sarah's awesome at this. Marty's great at this. I, I'm, doing my job <laughs> you're killing it and so but you know I, I I've always been taught to explain the reason why and everyone knows you know the what the rules are but if they have questions as to why we ask them to do these things we're happy to go over it so I also know that right now actually this past Monday so the fall season two or fall part two of the high school sports started. So volleyball, football, cross some track, I think, and or cross country and cheerleading started this past Monday. We have a huge group of kids in the high school that participate in these sports. I'm 
so hoping they can have a great season and make the best of it. Even in the snow, I know the kids, the football kids are out shoveling off the turf field. Um, I want so much. I I'm hoping that we can get through without any incident. And that's the thing. It's even more reason right now, if they want to continue with the sports that we need to make sure that, you know, if people aren't feeling good, they're staying home, any close contacts, they're letting people know so that we can, um, you know, they don't go to practice and, and risk exposing anybody else. Cause as we've seen with other sports, one, one positive case can, can take a team out for two weeks. So we want them to have a successful and safe season and be able to, to have their season and salvage it. So we just ask that people come to us. If you have questions, are you not sure? Should I go to practice? Should I not go to practice? Mr. Serino, the athletic director is very well versed. Delisha Reed. Um, you know, we also have kind of talked about, you know, we have the rap, you know, the rapid antigen testing. If people aren't feeling good, we have an opportunity to get people tested right off the bat. So there's lots of resources and we want members you guys to have a successful season. Members of your school uh, community, not just, not residents, any, just anyone. <laughs> it's Correct. School, school, school related right. take advantage. School related. <laughs> yep. Yes. That if you don't know where related. to get tested, if you don't know where to get tested, call us. Call us. <laughs> but, but Sarah can handle all of the rapid antigens. Yes. For I am you. only the school. This is my... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we want kids to be out there playing sports. Um, yep. Yeah, I, I to, we, oh, we, we've, had, we've had a lot of thinking about that. And I think the best thing is for the kids to be out there playing sports. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. It, it was, was cool seeing all the football players on the field the other day. I had to drive down down there and yep. it was, it's, it's a good look to good, have everyone. The positive uh, outlook, right? And it's I easy mean, to say you support the team. Now is the opportunity to actually support the team by being. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Being careful. Uh, before we go, Chris, can I just say a big thank you to everyone who has been helping at our clinics, all of the volunteers. We have a very robust MRC, which are medical reserve corps that is independent of the state's MRC. We, we have put it together ourselves. Uh, and a special thank you to Mary Hickey, who is a, a nurse who also runs the Abington Food Pantry, who has been at every senior clinic that we run, mm -hmm. uh, hasn't missed an opportunity to volunteer. So thank you to her. Uh, Alicia, uh, who am I missing? Caitlin. Uh, I, there, there's so many, I can't name every single one of them, but like uh, the library, some of the librarian staff have been able to help us. Uh, Heidi, all of you, we just want to say thank you to all the volunteers, to all the firefighters, to all the paramedics. Uh, all the people who are taking time off of their actual jobs mm -hmm. to come and help uh, get a shot into a senior's arm so they can get back out into the community or so they can get back over to the senior center when it's time to play bridge or pinochle. Um, so thank you to all the volunteers who worked that. Uh, thank you to the senior center staff for being so welcoming and so helpful They've been incredible. Absolutely could not say anything but nice things about those people. I don't I don't think people fully realize the hours and yeah. the struggles that they're putting into that. So thank you for all the staff that really helped us make it. Uh, the three things that I'm most positive and the most ha uh, proud about our clinics is that they are safe. Um, they are at familiar places with people that they are comfortable with. So you're going to come in, you're going to see a, a firefighter wearing an Abington patch. Uh, and you're going to know, you're going to get a shot from your school nurse, Donna Conso. And then you're going to go sit in the senior center with their staff and be around people that care about you. Uh, safe, familiar, and comfortable. Those are my the three things that I am the most proud of other than the team that is actually executing it. So thank you to all of the people that are that are helping us over there. It means the world to us that you are willing to take time out of your schedule to come put these things together. And make sure you give yourself a little pat on the back. You, Marty and Lindsay have come, you know, along with Justin Silva, come up with this amazing plan that has just been flawless. And every week it just gets better and better. So thank you guys for doing all the hard work. I can promise you it won't be for lack of effort. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, phenomenal players. We just need more of that sweet science juice. Let's go. <laughs> yep. Let's go. We're ready. All right. Well, I, um, Sarah, Lindsay, Marty, I want to thank you again for joining us this week. Um, I know you guys are tired and you've worked hard, so I'm going to let you get to your weekends. And remind our viewers, if you have any questions, um, please reach out. We'll be back again next Friday uh, with another update. Until then, wear your mask, wash your hands, stay safe. And guys, thank you so much for everything that you do.